and welcome to St. Ignatius Parish in San Francisco. As we enter into worship, please rise and join together in singing our gathering song, Come to the Water, which can be found on the front cover of your order of worship. of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. My friends, as we gather here as a community to celebrate the Eucharist, we do so with a particular reason, to give thanks as we welcome three new members into our community in the sacrament of baptism. And so I ask, Michael and Christina, what name do you give to your child? Kira Marie. Kira Marie. Nick and Thu, what name do you give to your child? Lucas Carlo. And Ryan and Anna, what name do you give to your child? Olivia Grace. Olivia Grace. And on behalf of your children, what is it that you ask of God's people, the church? Baptism. Baptism. <laughs> Baptism. Very good. You have asked to have your children baptized. In doing so, you are accepting the responsibility of training them in the practice of the faith. It will be your duty to bring them up to keep God's commandments as Christ taught us by loving God and our neighbor as we love ourselves. Do you clearly understand what we are undertaking? Yes. We yes. Do. yes. Yes. 
And are you ready to help the parents of this child in their duty as Christian parents, godparents? Yes. Yes. We well, are. Sir. We are. And members of this community, of this Christian community, on behalf of the whole church, are we ready to help these parents and these godparents to support these children by modeling the love of Christ and welcoming them into our family of faith? Yes. We are. Kira, Lucas, and Olivia, the Christian family welcomes you with great joy. In its name, we claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of his cross. And I trace the sign of the cross on each of your foreheads, and I invite your parents and godparents to the same. Let us pray. O oh God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test 
that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfishness, ambition exist, there is disorder in every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruit without inconsistency or insincerity. 
And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. <clears throat> where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet, but do not possess. You kill in envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but do not receive, because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and his disciples left, there, left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over and they will kill him. And three days later, after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So here we are on this 25th Sunday in ordinary time, and we are celebrating baptism or the baptisms of several of our children. And so I think it's probably pretty good to ask, what point or what argument is Jesus trying to make here in this gospel? Especially when he places a child in the midst of these disciples. Is he using this child as an example of someone without power, of someone without status? in order to shame his disciples, whom he has caught red-handed discussing who is greatest among themselves. You know, Mark's gospel is well known for portraying the disciples of Jesus as stunningly dense or perhaps complicated. 
and this scenario seems no exception. Their conversation is somewhat ridiculous. It's not likely that they are jockeying for any kind of position within the Roman colonial government or even within the religious establishment that ruled the city of Jerusalem during this time. Did anyone really care about who was number one in this scruffy dozen of young men? These young guys who were following Jesus around Galilee. Perhaps having heard reports of Jesus' transfiguration, these disciples are now hoping to get in on the ground floor of the next big thing. Or maybe it's simply an example of how it is in the smallest and most insignificant groups of folks that the power struggles are most vicious. So is Jesus simply saying, whoa, wait, hold on. Slow down here, guys. Don't get ahead of yourselves. Thinking that you are more important than this small child. He does, after all, say, if anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. And this certainly resonates with the view that we hear in the letter of St. James today, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But I do think there's something more going on than Jesus simply using a child to point out the selfish ambitions of his disciples. As he's always doing, Jesus is pointing us to something greater, something bigger than ourselves. He's pointing us to the kingdom of God and that his words and his deeds make the kingdom powerfully present to us. He is, as always, trying to show us that the reign of God arrives in a way that turns the ordinary course of events upside down. And he turns our own lives upside down along with them. If you want to know what it's like to welcome God's reign, to welcome this kingdom, think about what it means to welcome a child. I think it's giddy excitement at each new milestone combined with perhaps some bone-crushing weariness at each new demand these children place upon our young parents here. It's the joy of a love deeper than any, deeper than any love you thought possible, and it's combined with this newfound fragility in a heart that's always on the verge of breaking. And it's a constant stream of insight gained by seeing the world through the eyes of someone for whom everything is new. Combined then with an exhausting stream of questions that you are expected to answer. We might also think of what it means to welcome a child into a community such as this, like a parish. It means having your most solemn moments punctuated by sometimes noisy, rambunctious behavior, right? Things that deflate any kind of pretense. It means having to revise your agenda to accommodate those with a different agenda. It means having to reflect on and grasp anew your beliefs and your traditions in order to satisfy the questions of those who won't accept just because for an answer. Because in welcoming a child, we are welcoming a disruptive presence that makes us realize how little we actually know and how much we have yet to learn. We are welcoming together someone who might make us change the way we have always done things. We're welcoming a future, a future that we cannot anticipate or control. Welcoming a child is a lot like welcoming Jesus, who comes to disrupt and change our lives and point us to a future that's beyond anything we can imagine.
But Jesus is not simply saying that welcoming a child is like welcoming him, is like welcoming the one who sent him. He's saying that to welcome a child is to welcome him. It is to welcome the one who sent him. And here we enter into something that is deeply mysterious. Jesus tells us that he has joined himself to the human race in such a way that whatever we do for the least, we do for him. Jesus lodges himself in places most unlikely for one who is the king of kings. He joins himself to the weak and to the defenseless so that he can receive our love and he can receive our compassion. And who is weaker and more defenseless than a child? This is one reason why we baptize children. And this is why we are baptizing Kira and Lucas and all of Olivia this morning. Sacraments are signs that bring about what they signify. And in the baptism of a child, we see enacted the desire of the eternal God who creates the universe. We see that God coming to lodge and to settle within the most unlikely of places. And we believe that in baptism, the God who took flesh in Jesus will through the grace of this sacrament also dwell in Kira and Lucas and Olivia. Not because he has earned it by attaining some standard of human greatness, but because that's just who God is. And that is how God wants to be present among us. And this should give us hope. It should give all of us hope witnessing this sacrament this morning. That God can and does also dwell in each one of us. So let us pray as a community. We pray as a church that we will always welcome and honor and protect those children entrusted to us. Because in receiving them, we receive the real presence of Christ here in our midst. And let us also pray that God, who is most merciful, will have mercy on us all. Now it's showtime. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ came into the world to open to all of us the kingdom of justice and joy, of mercy and of new hope. Today we are blessed to welcome these children to walk with us in the way of the gospel and to baptize them in the same grace that binds us to Jesus and to all our sisters and brothers. Michael and Christina, Nick and Thu, Ryan and Ann, you are called in a special way to welcome your child into this life of faith and hope. And so my dear friends, we now ask God to give this child or these children new life in abundance through water and the Holy Spirit. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. 
In baptism, we use your gift of water, which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breathed on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. In the waters of the Jordan, your, your, your children, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the spirit. Your son willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. And after his resurrection, he told the disciples, go out and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father, look now, look now with love upon your church and unseal for her the fountain of baptism. By the power of the Spirit, give to the water of this font the grace of your Son. You created us in your own likeness. Cleanse us from sin and a new birth to innocence by water and the Holy Spirit. And we ask you, Father, with your Son to send your Holy Spirit upon the water of this font. May all who are baptized, may all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also with him to newness of life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear parents and godparents, you have come here to present these children for baptism. By water and the Holy Spirit, they are to receive the gift of new life from God, God who is love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring them up in the practice of the faith. See that the divine life which God, which God gives them is kept safe from the poison of sin to grow always stronger in their hearts. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, <clears throat> I invite you to renew now the vows of your own baptism. Reject sin, profess your faith in Christ. This is the faith of the church. This is the faith in which this, these children are about to be baptized. And I invite the assembly now to please stand and along with them, renew your own faith with these families. And so I ask us all, do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? And all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let the people say amen. 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 Please be seated. I now ask all three parents, uh, is it your will that, let's see if I can do this in order, Kira and Lucas and Olivia should be baptized in the faith of the church which we have all professed with you? Yes, yes, good. Whichever. Whoever she wiggles the less with, right? Olivia, are you ready? Do we want the stool for this? Here, we get a stool. She can stand on the stool. You can stand up. You stand right here? I think that might be easier. And then you can see everyone. Olivia, bend over. Olivia, I baptize you in the name of the Father 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just like a bathtub, huh? Look at that. Lucas buddy here, huh? Lucas, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm sorry. The God of power and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin, given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and welcomed you into his holy people. I'm going to put a little oil on your forehead or on, your, on the top of your head, okay? He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation. Is that okay? Yeah. As priest was anointed, as Christ was appointed, anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Can you say amen? Amen. All right, all right. We'll take the, we'll take the spotlight off you for now. All right. The God of power and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin, given you a new birth by water, and the Holy Spirit, and welcomed you into his holy people. You, oh my gosh, smile. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation. I spoke too soon. The chrism of salvation. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Amen. Okay. And the God of power the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin, given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Amen. Receive the light of Christ. You have your candle? Oh, good. Receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. These children of yours have been enlightened by Christ. They are to walk always as a child of the light. 
May they keep the flame of faith alive in their heart, and when the Lord comes, may they go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ made the deaf hear and the dumb speak. May he soon touch your ears to receive his word and your mouth to proclaim his faith to praise and glory, to the praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ made the deaf hear and the dumb speak. May he soon touch your ears and your mouth to proclaim his faith to the praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord Jesus made the deaf hear and the dumb speak. May he soon touch your ears to receive his word and your mouth to proclaim his faith to the praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. All right. My dear friends, you have put on Christ. In him you have been baptized. Alleluia, alleluia. So please join me as a community in welcoming these new members of our community. And let us turn together as a community, bringing our prayers, our needs, all of our concerns before our God this day. For the church that our ministry be focused on the teachings of Jesus and freed from the limitations of human constructs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, that leaders focus on sharing bread with the hungry and clothing with the naked. We ask that peace blanket Gaza, Ukraine, Sudan, and that those in power act with wisdom and humility. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For earth and all creatures, we pray especially for farmers and laborers who bring to harvest all of the food on which we depend, that their work be cherished by all who are filled by their bounty, and that local and federal entities offer authentic support as they endeavor to protect the land and make a just wage. We pray to the Lord. For the unhoused people in the Bay Area, that citizens and elected officials look beyond their own needs and make sacrifices so that there is room for everyone. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all of the intentions written in the book at the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe, that those pierced by pain of sorrow and worry be lifted up. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our beloved faithful departed, especially Brad, Bradley Ugeta, Luz C. King, Elizabeth Ann Murphy, Richard Spohn, and our friend Jay Davis, that they be found rejoicing in the fullest, fullness of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Ignatius Parish, that individually and collectively we be transformed into peacemakers who seek to strengthen the social fabric of the human family by responding as Jesus has shown us how. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of blessing and abundance, teach us the way towards life in you and with you. Hear these our prayers and help us to embody your love in our world. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite our families to extinguish their candles and they can return to their seats. 
At this time, we again pass uh, uh, our baskets in support of the work of St. Ignatius. We are grateful, as always, for your generous care of the needs of our community. Today, there will be a second collection to support the health care and the facilities of the retired priests of the Archdiocese of San Francisco. And for those watching at home, a link will be, will be shared in the chat during pulpit announcements at the end of Mass to direct your donations. And lastly, uh, I, I want to just call your attention uh, to uh, liturgical ministers around who are wearing name tags today. Uh, this week and next, you will be invited to join your gifts in our work of, at liturgy, either as a greeter, a lector, altar server, or a Eucharistic minister. I invite you to ask questions of these ministers who will be stationed uh, at our Parker Street entrance over there. Take advantage of the opportunity to sign up after Mass uh, at the Parker Street door. Thank you. As our gifts are gathered and prepared, please join together in singing, We Bring Our Gifts, which can be found on page six of your order of worship. Which will 
my friends, that these are gifts, our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor on, your supp on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. All in, all in. holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking, humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church scattered throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, the clergy, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Remember also all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together now with one heart and one voice, we too have the courage to pray as our Savior has taught us. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another some sign of Christ's peace. Together we pray our prayer for spiritual communion. Dear Jesus, we believe that you are fully present in the bread that is blessed and broken 
and the wine that is blessed and poured out in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Thank you for making us a part of you, the mystical body of Christ, the Church. Renew in us your sacrificial and let us be united with you at this moment so that in all our thoughts, words, and actions, we may represent you and love others as you love us. Amen. And my dear friends, behold, this is the Lamb of God. This is the one who comes to take away the sins of the world. How happy and blessed are we to be called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we are united through the body and blood of the Lord, joined together in singing, Do This in Memory of Me, which can be found on page 12 of your order of worship.
gracious and loving God, in the smallest of creatures, in the vastness of the universe, you pour out your love upon your people. As we have shared in the feast of your son, nourish us for our mission in this world. May we discern the ways of healing for our earth and reverence all who dwell in this, our common home. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. I just have a few announcements before our final blessing. The first, uh, the first announcement uh, is not that one. Maybe I have more than a few. <laughs> On the weekend of Sunday, September 29th, next Sunday, uh, next weekend, we will only have one Mass here at St. Ignatius Church, and that will be this Mass, and it's because of our choir. No, it's not because of our choir, but we're all going to come to hear uh, wonderful music. But next Sunday, we're going to celebrate our quarterly home for dinner. You see uh, posters in the entryway. Uh, if you'd like to know more about it, you can check our website, but next Sunday, uh, we will be celebrating our home for dinner. Um, following the 10 a.m. Mass uh, next Sunday. We'll, we'll gather from here. We'll go right to McLaren Complex for food and for fellowship. Come join us as we continue this beloved tradition. To make sure that our table is plentiful, please register and let us know you are coming. That would help uh, those who are preparing the food. If you want to volunteer, sign up uh, for one of our volunteer tasks. Set up, greet, clean up, serve food, bring a salad or a dessert, but that's not mandatory. We do look forward to seeing everyone there. Number two, children's faith formation uh, begins October 6th. So if you haven't already registered but are planning to do so, please do so soon. Uh, Monday is the last day to save $100 on your registration fees by helping our program with timely registration so that we have enough materials to teach our students uh, in, the, in the catechetical programs that we provide. At this time, I'd like to introduce Arlo Boyle, who is going to share a few words for us, with us. Good morning, everyone. It's almost afternoon. I'm Arlo Boyle, a fellow parishioner here at St. Ignatius. I am also on the committee for the liturgical environment and part of the liturgical ministry. I started coming to Mass here because I was welcomed by the two most gracious and warm greeters at the Parker Street door, Kathy Caligari and Mary Mellon. I watched them as they reached out to every person entering our church. Those people immediately felt invited to become part of our church community. Because of the inspiration of these two lighting, excuse me, of these two shining lights, I decided to become a greeter myself. And I am here to report that being a member of this liturgical ministry has been a deeply rewarding and fulfilling experience. I quickly felt the diversity and the richness of this community and felt I belonged. I would like to invite you to join with me to greet parishioners and guests as they come to Mass. I can guarantee that it will enrich your liturgical experience. It may also enrich your life. The sharing of the liturgy belongs to our priests, all of our ministries, and to all of us. I invite you to be part of this welcoming faith journey. I will be at the Parker Street door after Mass to answer any questions about which ministries may fit your gifts and your own schedule. Please answer the call to sign up for this work that is a vital part of our life together. It is truly a rewarding gift. Thank you so much. You'll notice that all of our liturgical ministers are wearing a name tag that identifies their particular ministry. So if the Holy Spirit is inviting you to one of these areas of ministry, I invite you to talk to one of them about serving and then head over to the Parker Avenue door uh, and sign up. We need your gifts, we need your ministry to keep our liturgy vibrant. For those of you participating online, a link to our second collection for the Priest Retirement Fund is being dropped into the chat. Uh, please join us as always for hospitality after mass, uh, directly behind the church in Fromm Hall. Um, I'm also, lastly, I'm also invited to remind you, or, or this is uh, 
to tell you that our link is active on the website for our Requiem Mass, which will be on November 3rd. So if you want to remember your beloved dead this year uh, at this Mass, you can register them uh, through the links uh, provided on our website. Uh, and again, I want to thank our families who brought their young people to us for baptism today. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your witness and for your dedication to these young, beautiful children. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go in peace and love to love and serve one another. Thanks be to God. God of day and God of darkness can be found on page 14 of your order of worship. Please return your orders of worship to the cubbies as you depart. <laughs>